Rub up your engines! Honda's recalling a whole bunch of their vehicles over defective engine parts. Now, this is a big deal. The engines could blow up, right? Now, they've recalled over 250,000 Hondas. That is a lot. Check for a recall, and they'll give you a website, and you just type your VIN number in the website, and it'll tell you if it's recalled or not. This is a big recall because they're saying that these engines could have been equipped with faulty rod bearings, the wrong one. Well, you got your piston, you got your piston rod, then there's a bearing that connects to the crankshaft that spins around, right? And if those bearings go bad, boom, your engine blows up. Like I said, you can look it up by VIN number, and it includes 2015 to 2020 Acura TLX, 2016 to 2020 Acura MDX, 2016 and 2018 Honda Pilot, 2017 and 2019 Honda Ridgeline, and 2018 to 2019 Honda Odyssey vehicles. Honda attributes the defect to an error during the manufacturing process of the bearings. It says it will instruct the dealers to inspect and repair or replace the engines as necessary, free of charge. Here's the thing. I know the BS they do with dealerships, right? The rod bearings are inside the engine. In order to access them, you would have to take the engine apart. They'll probably just, oh, it doesn't sound bad. We're not going to fix this, right? Total bunch of nonsense. You can't check it without taking the bottom of the engine off the oil pan, taking it apart, taking the rod bearings off, measuring them, see if they're within specs, see if they're the wrong ones, right? And what's that? Oh, we'll inspect them and fix them free of charge if needed. You know, they're always going to say it isn't needed. That is a super expensive job. And if they got to replace the engine, you would have a good leg to stand on. Say your engine already blew up, right? Well, your engine blew up. So, hey, they're going to have to fix that and replace it. They can't wheedle their way out if it's one of these hundred thousands that they have recalled, right? Honda quality isn't what it used to be. And they never used to have problems with their engines blowing up. They can't even make rod bearings correctly. And I always hate these recall fixes. Oh, they'll inspect it. They're not inspecting. They're not, they're not going to take the engines apart and measure the clearance and the rod bearings. No way. They'll probably just listen. No, it's not making any noise. And the problem with the rod bearings are they can work perfectly fine until they finally go out. And then, boom, the engine blows up. You can get very little notice. If one lets loose, it might not do anything until the lets loose and the engine goes. And the only way you can tell that it's worn would be by taking the engine apart and measuring it. And you know they're not going to do that. I'm surprised they didn't say, we'll try to fix it with a software update. <laughs> At least they didn't go that far. Well, it looks like Tesla has a worldwide problem with their suspension systems that they've been hiding. One Tesla owner got a $14,000 bill for a Tesla that he had just bought, the Model Y, and this problem occurred one day after he bought it. Now, Tesla has had tens of thousands of complaints over steering and suspension problems. Mr. Jane, who was a former Tesla owner, once he got a fix, he sold it. He got a $14,000 repair bill from an issue we encountered less than 24 hours after taking his brand new Model Y home. Now, you can imagine, you buy a car and it breaks that fast. You'd think they would have fixed it under warranty, but they wouldn't. They always try to deny claims. And of course, there's a class action lawsuit that's coming up for sure. Listen to this. While Tesla publicly denied some of the issues. The automaker was more aware of the issues than it had indicated publicly. Here's what Elon Musk said about it. When you go faster, you discover these things. If we knew that in advance, we'd fix them in advance. But he's not fixing them for free. He's making the people pay for it. The guy doesn't know about making cars. He rushed them into production. Poor quality control. You imagine buying a car and then the next day you got a $14,000 bill for the stupid thing and they refuse to fix it for free under warranty. And then when they do break and serious suspension stuff, oh, they tell it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to pay for it. You damaged the car, blah, 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 right? See, the problem is if you got a car and let's say the suspension piece breaks, right? It breaks, you're going to hit stuff, right? So they'll just say, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And they just say, well, you idiot, you ran into the curb. That broke the car. But it could very easily have been. The car broke, then it hit the curb, right? You can't prove what happened first one way or the other. At least this guy wised up. He got it fixed, and then he sold the car. He lost 10 grand. He had to sell for 10 grand less than what he paid for it, but at least he wised up and got rid of the stupid thing. Phoenix CR7 says, Scotty, I own a 2023 Buick Enclave. What do you think I should do to make it last as long as possible? What's the weakest point of the car? Well, the weakest is the automatic transmission. So don't be Johnny burnout and be burning out, slamming on the brakes, slamming on the gas. Just drive it normal. Maintain it. I would change the 
fluid and filter every 30,000 miles in that tank. I change the engine oil every 5,000 miles with full synthetic oil. And everything else I do normal. I change the coolant like every three, four years or every, you know, 70,000 miles and basically take care of the car. It's 2023. It should last, you know, but don't do burnouts and drive it hard because the trannies are weak. Zach Barry says, Scotty, I'm 16 year old. I've been driving a while looking at buying a 350Z. What are your thoughts? What do you mean by driving a while? You're only 16. <laughs> been driving a while. Yeah, 40, 50 years, right? <laughs> Okay, 350Zs, if they're taken care of, they are excellent vehicles, but you're 16 years old. Those cars are probably way too fast for you. Those are screaming race cars. I'll give you a 350Z story. I had a friend in Houston, and he was 30, and a girlfriend who was 18, so he bought her one of those used, right? I said, why are you buying her that car? She's going to wrap it around a tree. Well, I mean, did I call that one? About a month later, she wrapped it around a tree, and she left them for a guy with a Porsche. So <laughs> in your case, you don't have to worry about that. You're getting it for yourself. But that's an awful dangerous fast car for a 16-year-old to be driving around. Empty nester times five. I've got a 2012 Corolla. Has a maintenance required for a while. What could the problem be? It doesn't have any problems at all. The way it's set up is the way they build the stupid cars is every 15,000 miles, your maintenance light comes on. It is programmed to do that. All you got to do is watch some of my videos or just Google turning maintenance required light off on Toyota Corolla and you'll see there's just buttons you push on the dash to do the trip odometer. You push it a certain way, then you turn the key off, turn the key on, and you'll see lights go flash on, off, on, off, on, then it'll go off and then it's reset. And then 15,000 miles later it'll come on again. So there's nothing wrong with your car. That's just a maintenance reminder that they want to rip you off and have you go to the dealer and charge you $600 to change the oil or something. So no, there's probably nothing wrong at all. Just as long as you change your oil filter regularly, turn it off whenever it comes on. It just comes on every so many miles. Just another scam they pulled to try to get you to go to the dealer. Tom Baldwin said, Scotty, tell us how you really feel. Okay, well, you know, this wrist is a little bit sore and I got a kink in my back, you know, and I got a few warts here and there. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth aren't falling out though, so that's, you know, positive. I broke my toe the other day slamming it into something. But you try to forget all these things as you age and just forge on in a fantasy world where you still think that you're 18 years old, just stay the heck away from mirrors. That's my advice to people as you age. Hide the mirrors or throw them away. As she says, Scotty, are you a fan of spray paint in general? Well, I don't sniff it. <laughs> you know, it depends on what you want to use it for, right? Try spray painting a car, man. That's a hard thing to do because it was done by machines and they knew how many thousands of an inch thick to make the paint. And there's various layers of paint. So you think you're just going to get a can of paint that's matched the color of your car and spray it on. Good luck. How are you going to match that? It's almost impossible to do. If you are good with painting and you really want to paint up stuff on your car, forget a spray can. What you want to do is get one of those airbrush kits, right? And they don't cost much. I got an airbrush kit. I think it was 49 bucks on Amazon. It's its own setup. You plug it into 120 and you just buy the paint then. And you can, if you're good with an airbrush, I've seen some airbrush guys who were phenomenal, right? And they all paint designs on cars, but you can use it to touch up cars. And those work quite well if you're good at using an airbrush, right? I'm no true artist. Well, the only thing I ever fix is the bottom panels because you can't see them. That so as long as you spray them pretty good, they look okay because you're standing up and that's on the bottom of the car, right? I would never attempt to paint a hood or something. It would never look right. But there are people there that have the skills that can do it. But very rarely can it be done with a spray can. You really need to get into at least an airbrush setup where you can perfectly control it and mix it just right depending on the atmosphere outside. See, spray can is a spray can. It's set. What's in there is in there. If you get a touch-up kit, then you can do a little test and you can see what's the humidity today. It'll tell you how much paint thinner to mix with the paint so it will dry perfectly for that conditions of that day. That's how they paint cars, right? They don't have a generic can that works the same. It doesn't. It might work at one temperature and one humidity, but not another, where if you get a spray kit, you can do it yourself. Whole kit where you can actually mix it, put it in the container, put a little thinner, a little of the paint, and it does a much better job. The Carolina boss says, what's 
a good scanner every now and then for a mechanic who works on cars once in a while. All right, just going to work on cars once in a while. You might try that blue driver, the Canadian guys. It works with your cell phone, and uh, you can get it for as little as 99 bucks when they're on sale. And it does quite a bit of stuff. It's got quite a bit of information in it for 99 bucks. It's probably the best one out there for 99 bucks, you know? If you want to be serious, you get an Autel for 500 does a lot of stuff, right? Uh, but 500 bucks is 500 bucks. For 100 bucks, that does an awful lot, the blue driver. You could have some fun with it, learn a few things you might not know. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.